Okay, today on the Linux Unix Tech Channel, uh, we're going to talk about Virtual Machine Manager. And uh, this is your host, Data Pioneer. I'm out on the website now for Virtual Machine Manager at vertmanager.org. And today we're going to talk about a command line tool that allows you to run virtual machines in Linux. It's called Vert Manager. And let's get into it here right after this. Okay, today we want to talk about Virtual Machine Manager, and uh, Virtual Machine Manager, as I said, is a uh, program or an application that allows you to run virtual machines in Linux uh, without having to use other uh, applications that you may be familiar with, such as VirtualBox or VMware, or even uh, for Windows, in the case of Windows, Hyper-V uh, is another uh, application for running virtual machines. So Virtual Machine Manager in computing, it's a, a Red Hat Virtual Machine Manager, uh, also known as Vert Manager, V-I-R-T Manager, uh, and it's a desktop virtual machine monitor, um, and that comes uh, directly from Wikipedia. Um, the developers of Virtual Machine Manager is Red Hat. It's written in Python. Um, and it uh, licenses the GPL version 2 plus. Okay. To download Virtual Manager in Linux, uh, depends on your um, distribution, of course. But if you're using um, CentOS or Red Hat, then you'll use the yum, Yellow Dog Update Manager package, and use the command yum install vert manager. Uh, Fedora is also another one. If you're running Debian or Ubuntu and you use the Aptitude Package Manager, uh, then you'll be able to utilize the apt-get install vert manager command uh, at the command line and to install it. Um, <clears throat> another uh, distribution of Linux that you can use vert manager in, obviously, is Gentoo. And with Gentoo, you can use the command emerge vert manager. And then lastly, if you're running OpenBSD, uh, you can use the command package underscore underscore add uh, space vert dash manager to get that launched in that uh, not a distro of Linux but uh, operating system called OpenBSD. Okay, so <clears throat> the vert manager um, utilizes something called hypervisors. Um, in the hypervisor for Vertman is KVM, which is the kernel vert virtual manager. Uh, by definition, a hypervisor is a computer software or firmware or hardware that creates and runs virtual machines. Uh, the computer on which the hypervisor runs is called the host machine, and each virtual machine is called a guest. Okay, the hypervisor presents the guest operating system with a virtual operating platform and manages the execution of that guest operating system. You can run multiple instances uh, of, of virtual machines within an operating system in a virtualized environment. Uh, the hypervisor basically sets up the hardware resources and other resources necessary to run that virtual machine. And some of these virtualized hardware resource platforms are Linux, Windows, and Mac OS. So you can run in Linux, you can run Windows. Uh, I do that with Vert Manager. Uh, you can run Mac OS, uh, and in a Windows environment, you can or platform as the host. You can run Linux and Mac OS, uh, and vice versa. So any combination of that. Um, you can run the physical instances of x86 or x64, 64-bit. I've run a 64-bit Debian and um, and also 64-bit Windows 10. Pro in my Linux platform, which is Farron OS. All right, and so uh, the Virtual Machine Manager um, runs uh, a little bit differently than uh, an operating system level virtualization, 
which in which case uh, instances the virtual machines share a common kernel uh, through the guest operating system whereas uh, when you're running um, vert manager or some other uh, application that uh, allows you to run virtual machines you're running uh, its own kernel you're not running a single kernel within the operating system uh, itself so what is KVM? So KVM is basically a kernel based virtual machine and it is an open source virtualization technology that's built into Linux. Uh, Vert Manager uses KVM. It also uses something called Q QEMU and we'll talk about that in a moment. So specifically KVM lets you turn Linux into a hypervisor. Okay, So your operating system um, GNU Linux becomes the hypervisor that allows the host machine to run multiple isolated virtual environments called guests or virtual machines, VMs, uh, that they are typically referred to. KVM is part of Linux. Uh, it's been built into Linux um, for a long time. First announced in 2006. And if you've got 2.6.20 or newer Linux version, then you have KVM. And it was merged into the mainline Linux kernel version a year later in 2007 uh, because KVM is part of the existing Linux code. It immediately be benefits uh, from its new Linux feature and uh, advancements without uh, additional engineering necessary within the Linux kernel or the Linux uh, distribution itself. I mentioned that uh, part of uh, Vert Manager is QEMU, and so QEMU, what is that? So it's a free and open source emulator that performs the hardware virtualization for Vert Manager. Uh, QEMU is a hosted virtual machine monitor. It emulates the machine's processor through dynamic binary translation and provides a set of different hardware and device models for the machine, enabling it to run a variety of guest operating systems. It can also be used with KVM, which is what Vert Manager does, to run virtual machines at near native speed. Uh, I've been using it now for a while, and uh, I've actually given up VirtualBox 5.x and 6.x as a result of Virtual Manager because I find that my virtual machines run better in Vert Manager than they do in either VirtualBox or VMware. Now, of course, VirtualBox is free. VMware has a free version, but free VMware, uh, for the most part, is proprietary. Uh, ESXi, a platform that Vert Man VMware runs on, of course, is proprietary. <coughs> so QEMU uh, can also do emulation for user-level processes. It allows applications to compile for one architecture to run on another. The original author of QEMU, by the way, was uh, Fabrice Bellard. And uh, the developers uh, of the QEMU team include Peter Maydell and others. Uh, it's written in the C programming language, and it was written for the Linux, the Microsoft Windows, and the Mac OS, and some Unix platforms as well. It is a hypervisor, and it is covered under the GPL version 2 license. Another hypervisor is called Zen. And uh, you can find that at the zenproject.org. What is Zen and what is the Zen Project? Uh, the Zen Project is a Type 1 hypervisor which provides services that allow multiple computer operating systems to execute on the same computer hardware concurrently. It was developed by the University of C Cambridge and is now being developed by the Linux Foundation with support from Intel. I don't use the Zen platform, but you can. The University of Cambridge Computer Laboratory developed the first versions of Zen, and the Zen Project community developed and maintains, or develops and maintains, the Zen Project as a free and open source software uh, project subject to the requirements of the GNU General Public License version 2. The Zen Project is currently available for the IA32, x86-64, and the ARM instruction sets. The original author <coughs> and authors of the Zen project are Keir Fraser, Stephen Hand, Ian Priet from the University of Cambridge Computer Laboratory. Current developers of the Zen project are the Linux Foundation, 
Intel, and its initial release was in 2003. It is written in the C programming language. It is a hypervisor, and it is covered under the GNU GPL version 2 license. Another thing that uh, the Vert Manager takes advantage of is something called LXC. And what does that stand for? That stands for the Linux Containers. And it is, uh, can be found, more information about it can be found from uh, the website linuxcontainers.org. So LXC is an operating system level virtualization method for running multiple isolated Linux systems on a control host using a single Linux kernel. So LXC performs operating system level virtualization as opposed to virtualization uh, using uh, applications and hypervisors. Uh, it was developed uh, by uh, IBM, uh, Virtuoso, uh, Google, collaboration with Eric uh, Biederman and others. Its user space was developed by Daniel Lezicano, uh, Sergey Hallen, and Stephanie Graber and others, or Graber and others. Its initial release was in 06 of 2008. It's written in C, Python, Shell, and Lua. Uh, it is uh, based on the Linux operating system because it is a container for Linux. It uh, runs on the x86 IA64 Power PC, which is what the Mac runs on, Spark, which is what OpenBSD and BSD uh, run on, and Itanium and ARM. Uh, it is an OS level virtualization platform and it's licensed under the GNU LGPL version 2.1 with some components covered under the GNU GPL version 2 and BSD license. Okay, so I'm back out on the website here for Virtual Machine Manager and so let me show you how I installed uh, Virtual Machine Manager in Farron OS uh, January 2020 snapshot. And so I'm out here on my uh, terminal in Farron and to install Virtual Machine Manager all I did was run sudo uh, apt get install vert manager and uh, I've already put in my uh, sudo password so it didn't prompt me for that um, and so it begins the install process it builds the dependency tree uh, it's in my repo for Farron OS and so it found it and installed it tried to but it's already been installed as you can see here and it is the newest version which is 1.5.1 and so it doesn't need to reinstall it a second time um, but that's how you install it if you are running uh, Debian or Ubuntu based uh, distribution of Linux okay so now that we have uh, virtual manager installed in our system uh, in Farron via the command line um, let's go ahead and uh, go out onto the uh, systems start menu and let's uh, fire it up. So I'm going to go to the start menu in Farron and I'm going to pull up the menu and go to V for virtual machine manager and go ahead and bring that up. And so this is virtual machine manager. This is the presentation you get when you open it up. Uh, I have two VMs already set up in here. Uh, one for Debian 10 and one for Windows 10. Okay, um, you can uh, fire up the virtual machine, and I'll show you how to do that in a moment. But uh, if you go to View and Graph, you can see that you have various graphs that you can uh, display while you're running your virtual machines. Uh, you've got your CPU usage, your host CPU usage your memory usage, disk I.O., and network I.O. Now this is something you don't see in uh, VMware. You don't see this in VirtualBox. Uh, you may see this in Hyper-V, but uh, I'm not quite sure. It's been a while since I used Hyper-V in Windows 10, but I was kind of surprised to see the level here of detail that you can get in running these virtual machines. All right, so um, also you can go to uh, Edit and Preferences and you can uh, get various levels of preferences here for enable system icon tray, uh, for polling here, for updating the status of your uh, displays here and every so many seconds, I think it's every three seconds it's set here. 
Uh, for new VM, you can uh, set up the defaults that you want to have for your graphics type, for adding uh, USB redirection, for storage format, and for CPU default. Here for console, you can uh, tell the application uh, vert manager for graphical console, uh, you know, whether you want full screen or whether you want uh, never or always. Um, you can resize the guest with the window. I have it turned off at the moment. You can tell it what to grab for grabbing the, the mouse in the virtual machine. And then you can force the console shortcuts by hitting the checkbox there and closing it. You can also provide feedback here for uh, confirmation, such as when you force a power off or pause or uh, remove the device or delete storage, etc., etc. Uh, you can do that there. So let's go ahead and close that. Okay, so uh, something else that you can do here uh, in your Virtual Machine Manager, you can go up to Edit and Virtual Machine Details. I'm sorry, not Virtual Machine, but uh, Edit and Connection Details. And you can click on that, and <clears throat> you can see here that the Basic or Overview tab is showing us that um, the basic details are the QEMU slash KVM details. Um, the libvirt URL is the KEMU system uh, and it auto connects. If you uncheck the box it would not auto connect. Uh, while you're connected to a virtual machine it will give you the usage uh, for CPU and memory in real time here as well as you get it out here as well uh, on the display. For virtual networks uh, you can see here that the default virtual network in this system for um, for my uh, uh, libvirt manager is called default. I can rename that if I like. The device is the VIRBR0, which is the network. The state is that it is active. Uh, it auto starts on boot, and if I uncheck that, it will not auto start on boot. Um, but I want it to auto start on boot. In other words, I want it to be running when I boot up. Um, I can get my IPv4 configuration here by down arrowing and selecting that and getting a network IP address for this system uh, which is 192.168.122.0 slash 24 and the range for DHCP since DHCP is controlling the IP addressing here is from the 168.122.2 to 168.122.254 it is forwarding NAT and then for quality of service configuration I could enable the inbound quality of service or I could enable the outbound quality of service uh, but I, I choose not to do either one here at this moment. For storage um, there's no applied changes. Would you like to uh, apply these? Uh, there were unapplied. So I'm going to say yes to this and said couldn't update the network. It's fine. If I se select storage um, what it does is it bounces me down here to this ISO storage pool okay from the file system directory now virtual manager virtual machine manager uses something called storage pools to store the ISO files uh, that it connects to and that it runs uh, if you choose to do that and so what I have done is I have named the storage pool ISO storage pool and its size is uh, the size of the drive that it's on, which is 735.23, rather, uh, gigabits. Um, and 180.34 gigabits are in use. Its location is at Home Data Pioneer and a directory called ISO Pool. So I created that pool, came up here and named it, pointed it to that. The state of that pool right now is active. It auto starts on boot, and then I selected uh, the plus sign here for the volumes, and I created these volumes, which I have uh, loaded into uh, this location here, Home Data Pioneer ISO Pool. So all these ISOs reside in that location, and I can use those to create my virtual machines. Okay, and then for network interfaces, I can set up by clicking the plus sign. I can uh, type up a different type of or indicate a different type of in internet or uh, internet rather interface or network interface. Here it's bridged or I could go with bond or ethernet or VLAN but I'm, I'm doing bridged right now. The reason I'm selecting a bridge interface is because I want my virtual machines to be on the same network 
IP address wise as my host machine which is Farron OS so I can communicate with it so let's cancel that out and close this interface here okay so I'm going to go ahead and uh, fire up the Debian 10 uh, virtual machine that I have here so I'm going to go ahead and click this uh, button here for power on the virtual machine and then I'm going to go ahead and open it and then I'm going to uh, bring up the view to full screen and uh, I'm going to hit the uh, enter key on the keyboard and that's going to bring up the virtual machine interface it's going to boot up and then it's going to come up to a login screen okay so this login screen is less than the 1920 by 1080 resolution that I have on my monitor but it will correct itself here momentarily so let me put in my password hit the enter key and it's now going to come up to or should come up to a full screen this is Debian 10 uh, with the Plasma KDE Plasma desktop and here we are and so it says that we're wired connected so you see how quickly um, this fired up this is much faster than with VirtualBox or even VMware in my opinion uh, very smooth very clean uh, what you saw on the screen initially um, you know you can live with that that's, that's just uh, it's setting up the hypervisor for the system for the uh, distribution that it's running alright so let's, uh, let's get in here and um, take a look at some of the things in the system if I get into the console uh, here and let's do a uname A you can see this is a Debian Linux system virtual machine. It's called Debian VM um, with a kernel 4.19.0-8-AMD64. Uh, and then if we do a DF, sorry, the keyboard here, KH, you can see that um, Dev VDA1, which is the virtual machine uh, drive that I have. Uh, set up for Debian. Uh, it is uh, 236 megabytes in size, uh, 94 megabytes used, 130 megabytes available, and it's using 42%. Um, the dev mapper for Debian for root is a 55 gigabyte uh, virtual drive of which I'm using 5.6 gigs and uh, 47 gigs available so I'm only using 11% on the the root mount here okay so let's go ahead and uh, exit out of this get back here so this is uh, to show you how quickly this responds using vert manager I'm going to go ahead and uh, fire up uh, Firefox ESR and uh, show you that uh, I've got this thing set up I believe with uh, 4 gigs of RAM so it should respond fairly well. It might be two gigs. We can check it out here in a moment. Um, but uh, yeah, so this is uh, it's clicking right along. Uh, if I go to YouTube, you can see that it's, uh, it's you know it's moving right along, very responsive. I'm very happy with it. Um, and this is a Debian Linux distribution. Um, there are other things that you can run. I'm running Windows 10 Pro, as I said. So I think I may fire that up and show it to you. Uh, so let's go ahead and close this and uh, close the tabs let me go ahead and uh, let's power this off now that we're done with this one all right all right and so the uh, the other one that I have uh, let me see if I can get into something here real quick machine fire view manager okay all right so let me go ahead and close that Let's go to the Windows 10 uh, virtual machine that I have. And this is a fully activated, genuine copy with product key of Windows 10 Pro. Uh, so if I start it up and then open it, let's do a view here, full screen. And so this is uh, Windows 10 Pro coming up. Should be relatively fast.
And I believe I have uh, allocated uh, 8 gigabytes of RAM um, with a uh, 70 gigabyte uh, virtual hard drive space here uh, in uh, Windows 10 Pro. So it's coming up now. And it shouldn't take very long. Here we go. All right. So let me click in here. And let me put in my pin. And it should bring us up to Windows 10 Pro. If you're a Windows user, this will be familiar. And it takes a few seconds for Windows to come up after the past the uh, login screen and the welcome window. I think I just recently did some updates. Yeah, so that's why it took a little longer. But here we are. So this is uh, my homage to Windows 10 uh, breaking everything for users. But um, this is Windows 10. And uh, you can see from the menu here, it's very familiar with your tiles out here and your menu for Windows 10 over here as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and power this off. Shut that down. And um, when you're creating your virtual machines, and I'll show you that in a moment, um, you can um, review what you're going to do in your settings, settings-wise, before you actually um, fire it up. And so I'll show you that here when this closes. Okay, so I'm back out here in the Virtual Machine Manager. So let's say I'm, I want to create a new virtual machine uh, for another either distribution of Linux or a Windows. I'll say distribution of Linux. What you can do is you can go up here on this icon here called Create a New Virtual Machine. And you can click that. And it opens up the new VM interface with the QEMU KVM connection uh, established. And you can either choose from a local install media ISO image from CD-ROM or USB, um, a network install from HTTP, uh, FTP, or NFS. You can do a network boot for Pixie, or you can do import image uh, existing disk image. Now, the existing disk image has to be compatible with Virtual Ma Machine Manager, and uh, that image would probably be a .qcow2 image. I'm not sure it will take a virtual machine or a VMware image and import it into VirtualBox. You could give it a try, but I don't think it'll work. So let's do a local install media ISO. So I'm going to go ahead and click that radio button and hit forward. And what that's going to do is it's going to take me to the to this particular window um, to uh, locate the install media. And so what I'm going to do is select Use ISO Image, and I'm going to browse and it browses to the pool, which is the ISO storage pool that I told you mentioned earlier. So I'm going to go ahead and select the Fedora Workstation Live. I'm going to choose the volume. And then I can tell it to automatically detect the operating system, or I can choose to select Linux and then select Fedora. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to let it automatically detect it. Um, even though I know what it is. And then I'm going to go ahead and forward that. Uh, please specify valid OS variant. Okay, so it's not doing that for me. So I need to do it manually. So I'm going to just tell it Fedora 28. Okay, forward. And then I'm going to give it 2048 or 2 gigs of RAM, 2048 megs or 2 gigs, one CPU. I'm going to forward that. I'm going to call this Fedora. 30 workstation, and then even though that's 28, that's the closest I could get to it. Uh, it's based on Fedora 28. Uh, it is going to be uh, 20 gigs in size, and I can customize the configuration before the install by checking that box. Click Finish, and uh, invalid guest name because I have spaces in between. I did that deliberately so I could show you. Um, that you have to have underscores or dashes. You cannot have spaces. You can run all the words together, but you can't have space. All right, so now we should be okay.
Okay, so it opens up this window here, and you've got the overview of what you're doing here. You've got BIOS firmware, you've got this chipset, you can change that. The hypervisor here is KVM, the architecture is x86-64. You can tell it to shut off or shut down um, that particular VM uh, at the end of the install. Um, for CPUs, you can set the number here and the model. For memory, you can uh, increase or decrease the memory allocation. For boot options, you can tell it on what order you want things to boot up. You can want the virtual disk, C the IDE CD-ROM, or the NIC. Okay? Um, you can tell it to start the virtual machine on host boot up or en enable a boot order if you want. Um, I'm going to let it go from way, the way it is. Then you've got your virtual disk here, your IDE CD-ROM, your NIC, your tablet, display spice. There are no applied changes. I'm going to say, uh, or there are unapplied. So I'm going to say yes. Okay, so uh, display spice. This is a spicer server. I don't have one, so that doesn't apply. For sound, I'm going to use ICH6. Uh, you can change that to other things, as you can see here. All right, for console, PTY device type, uh, and then you've got other things down here, USB redirectors, controller for USB, etc. video is the QXL video, all right? So now, now that I'm done, I'm going to go ahead and say begin installation, and now the virtual machine starts to fire up, and I'm going to go to the view and full screen, and I'm going to hit Start Fedora, and uh, I'm not going to install Fedora Workstation today. That's in a different video, but uh, as you can see, it's starting up. It's doing its checks. It's doing other things, and um, when it gets done with this, then I will uh, get out of it and uh, move along. Okay, so it's booting up. It should come to the installer eventually. What I like about Virtual Machine Manager is it, it finds the 1920 by 1080 screen resolution fairly easily. Um, and um, I was happy with it. I'm really happy with the way it performs. I'm happy with uh, uh, the way I can work with it and do a lot of things with it that I really couldn't do with uh, uh, VirtualBox, to be honest. Okay, so we are up to the installer now for Fedora, so I don't need to go any further. I'm going to go ahead and power this off and get out of it. And there's one other thing I want to show you. Um, so let me go ahead and close this. The other thing I wanted to show you was um, that there is, there are rather some commands that you can run. Um, to change the size of your images uh, that you set up. Uh, for instance, let's go back to here. And one of the things that uh, you need to know for Virtual Machine Manager is that, let me clear the screen here. Uh, let's see if I can bring this up to a little higher. OK. Uh, is that uh, Virtual Machine Manager is installed at, uh, I'm going to change directory to uh, var. I think it's uh, var lib lib vert. Okay, and if I do an ls lh on this, you can see that I've got uh, images. I've got an images directory here. So if I change to the images directory and run a listing of that long listing, you can see that here are the images that I have: um, the Debian ten and the Windows 10 that I had initially, and then I've started the Fedora 30 workstation. Notice these are all .qcow2 files. Okay, that's what the libvirt manager or the virtual machine manager uh, uses uh, to create its images. Notice also that, uh, for instance, on the Windows 10 image, it says it's 58 gigabytes in size, uh, and for Debian 10 it says it's 62 gigabytes in size. That wasn't the original size of these files. Uh, I, when I originally set this up, I only set up Windows 10 for, I believe, 40 gigs, and I set up Debian 10, I believe, for 20. Now, so what did I do 
to increase the size of those files. What happens is in Virtual Machine Manager, you designate the dynamically allocated size of the drive that you want, and then it uh, starts out low and builds up. Okay, but eventually it's going to get to that limit that you set in there. But let's say uh, you know it starts to exceed the limitation that you have. You can change that, and the way you can do it is you can go into the terminal and you can issue um, this command right here um, to get a, an idea of the size of that file and the information about that file you can run the sudo qemu img info uh, and then that's assuming that your machine's name is web. Let's go ahead and do that in the terminal and uh, let me copy this and so let me get back out to the terminal and let me clear this space here and let me do a control uh, shift V to put that in there and let's eliminate the web and put in Win10 or Debian 10 okay hit enter and so what it shows us here is that the file format is QCOW2 that the virtual size is 60 gigabytes. Now it was, as I mentioned, 40, um, I believe, initially. No, 20. It was 20 initially, and I increased it to 60. Um, disk size right now is only 10, so it's using 10 out of 60. Here's the cluster size. Here's It ha does have a snapshot, uh, and that's not something I've shown you yet. You can create snapshots uh, of your virtual machines, and there's a um, a means to do that within the interface and then it shows you some other information it tells you whether it's corrupt or not and it says that that virtual machine is not corrupt okay so let's go back out to here and you can see that once you get the info here you can check the uh, the image itself by running this command so let me copy that command out to the terminal and uh, so let me clear and we run uh, Control Shift V here, and let's go back to Debian 10, and you can see that there are no errors were found in the image. 100% uh, was allocated, 0.05% fragmented, and 0.00% compressed clusters. Uh, here's the image end offset for that particular uh, virtual machine as well. So if we go back out here again. One other final command that we can run to resize it is this command right here. So let's do a sudo qemu image resize. And I'm just going to go ahead and increase it two more. I can't do that. I can't do it now because I have snapshots. That's another thing I need to tell you. So let me copy that command. Go back out here. And so if I wanted to, for instance, if I wanted to increase the size of the Debian 10 image, if I had not created snapshots of that image already, I could just run this command and I could tell it to increase the current size, which I believe said was at uh, 60, by 2 gigs. And so when I run this command, then I rerun the command to get the information on the particular virtual machine, it would say now that the image is 62 gigabytes in size. Um, that's a great thing. Uh, I have I've not been able to find a way, easily anyway, in VirtualBox to do this and this is a great thing with virtual machine manager that you could just run a simple command if you don't have snapshots and if you do have snapshots just remove the snapshots and then uh, put the snapshots back uh, after you're done uh, increase the size of it and um, and you're good to go now the the only difference here or distinction I will tell you is if you're a Windows user once you run this command and increase the size then you will need to go into Windows to device manager and you will need to expand the the logical volume um, using that interface to expand it out it won't do it automatically for you okay so if we go back out to uh, here and I think there was one other thing I wanted to show you um, so let's go to the Debian 10 and let's uh, if I can let me see here. Uh, virtual machine details. Yeah, there is one other thing here: managing VM snapshots. And so, if you click that button right there, um, it allows you to create a snapshot by clicking that plus sign. 
and it will set up a new snapshot. Right now I've got a snapshot set up and I call them restore points. This one's for Debian 10 on the QEMU KVM uh, and it is restore point 02 for February 29, 2020. Uh, if I expand this out you can see a little further and then the time of day which is 1901 Eastern Standard Time so that I know exactly when I created this snapshot. Now if I want to create another one for today uh, at this very moment I can click the plus sign I can call this restore point and I'm going to call it 02 or actually 03 01 2020 and the time right now is 2.28 p.m. which is 14.28 p.m. 14.28 military time or uh, UTC uh, time and it is Eastern Standard Time so 14.28 Eastern Standard Time um, and I'm going to say uh, manual snapshot of Debian 10 okay and click finish all right, and it creates that snapshot. So now I've got another snapshot, and if I get back into the image, you'll see the snapshot in the image as well. Uh, and so that's this is a great thing right here, guys. Um, Virtual Machine Manager is something I think you should really take a look at. I think you will find it very helpful. I think you will probably, if you're using VirtualBox right now, you'll you'll move away from it and come to Virtual Machine Manager. I know I did. I ran from it. All right, so um, this has been a quick review of Virtual Machine Manager, uh, which uh, is available, again, at vertmanager.org. I'll put a link to this uh, below the video so that you have it, so that you can download it. And uh, the instructions are right out here on the page uh, for downloading it. Uh, and uh, But I can replicate that below that as well. So if you like this video, go ahead and uh, hit the thumbs up on my video uh, because I, I can use that to enhance my subscribership on the uh, on the channel. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and then uh, hit that bell off to the right hand side so that every time I upload a video, you get notified. So this has been the Data Pioneer with a Linux Unix tech channel looking at Virtual Machine Manager for Linux. Have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.